Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Flemington, New Jersey. To take a look at this brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet. This is the RT Plus trim with E all wheel drive in gray cray with a red interior. Now we've already seen the GT and GT Plus in the Hornet with that two liter Hurricane four cylinder and the nine speed automatic transmission. Now we have the hybrid drive line in this Hornet RT. We're gonna see what kind of action this is gonna to bring to the table in this highly competitive small SUV segment. So let's dig in. All right, here we are on the front end of the Hornet RT, the gray cray paint with the gloss black on the front. Looks really good. We have that red Dodge badge in the center of the grill. LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals. We do have some fake side air curtains here. Would have liked to see them either make them side air curtains or put in fog lamps. Let me know what you guys think. And then we have functional hood extractors up here on either side of the hood to get the heat out of the engine bay. But overall, it's a really sharp looking front end on this Hornet RT. Wheel and tire setup on this Hornet RT. We have an 18 inch by seven and a half inch abyss finish aluminum wheel with the Dodge badge on the center cap. Now the brake caliper is non-painted with the Dodge branding on it. Standard brake and rotor package. Now these 18 inch wheels are wrapped in Goodyear Eagle Sport tires, 225 on the width, a 55 series sidewall, 18s, all four corners, and this vehicle is electric, all wheel drive. All right, our full side profile on this Hornet RT, the gray cray paint, I think looks great against this gloss black. There is no chrome on the side profile of the vehicle. Everything is either gray or gloss black, looks really stealth, and that's what the idea is behind this Hornet RT. Now, just so everyone knows, the Dodge Hornet is based on the Alfa Romeo Tonale SUV platform. They're both made in Italy, and the Hornet RT is, has the same drive line as the Alfa Romeo Tonale as well. So what we're looking at here is an Alfa Romeo Tonale in a Dodge wrapper or in Dodge clothing on this Hornet RT. But I personally, I like Italian SUV design. I think they did a nice job designing this vehicle for Dodge, but let me know what you think about the sharing of platforms by the Stellantis group. As we move in closer, as you can see, we have the gloss black around the wheel wells, plays off nice against the gray paint. The blacked out Dodge badge looking good on the front fender. Side view mirrors, we have gloss black with LED turn signals. We are color matched on the front and the rear door handle. On the left side of the car, you have the charge port for your plug-in hybrid. On the right side of the car, you have the fuel filler. Up top, we have a color matched roof spoiler, gloss black shark fin antenna, color matched roof with an oversized sunroof. The rear end of our Hornet RT, we have the roof spoiler coming off the top. We have the wiper down below on the glass. I like the way the glass moves down to a point on the bottom. I think it gives it some good style. We have LED taillights, LED turn signals with the lights coming all the way across and meeting at the lit up Dodge badge in the back, which is a nice touch. And that's similar to how they do it on the Tonale. Now, as we look at the tailgate, we have blacked out Hornet badge on the right, the RT blacked out badge on the right, the Hornet badge on the left, sorry about that. Down below, we have gloss black on the bumper area with a functional dual exhaust. So since we got the functional dual exhaust on this Hornet RT, let's see how it sounds. We are under the hood of this Hornet RT. And what do we have for a power plant? We have a 1.3 liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder plug-in hybrid engine made it to a six-speed plug-in hybrid automatic transmission. 288 net horsepower, 383 net pound-feet of torque. 
This Hornet can tow up to 2,000 pounds. MPGEs and combined driving, 77. And gasoline only in miles per gallon and combined driving is 29. The engine's minimum octane rating is 91, so you'll need to use premium unleaded fuel. All right, we're well, at the charge port for this 2024 Hornet. And what are we looking at? We have a 15.5 kilowatt hour, 306 volt lithium ion battery pack. You're going to get 30 miles of EV only driving on a full charge. And at a level two charger at home, it's going to take about two and a half hours to charge. If you don't have a level two charger at home, it's going to take over eight hours to charge at a level one charger. Before we get into the interior of this Hornet RT Plus, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much am I going to have to spend to get into one of these Hornets? They look pretty cool, but with all this action going on on this vehicle, it's got to be pretty expensive. Well, you're right. It's not cheap. Now, the base price for the 2024 Hornet RT Plus with E all-wheel drive before options is $45,935. Now, this particular Hornet has some options. You have to pay an extra $495 for the gray cray exterior paint and an extra $495 for the red leather seats. We then have customer preferred package 28D, which is the RT blacktop package for an additional $1,595. That's going to get you the gloss black painted mirror caps, the dark Hornet badge, the dark RT badge, the gloss black painted side window moldings, and these 18 inch by seven and a half inch abyss finish aluminum wheels. Then we need to add in destination and delivery of $1,595 from the Dodge Palmogiano Italy assembly plant. And we're looking at a total MSRP for this vehicle from the factory of $50,115. Let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot box, nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator. Would have liked to have seen some aluminum finish on these considering we're in the RT trim. Floor mats are in the cargo area at this time. Seats, we have power seats with lumbar for the driver and the front passenger. And then we have this red leather. And man, is it red. With red stitching, red designs all over. Dodge badge embossed into the headrests. Nice and soft. Nice bolstering though. But we got a lot of red on the seats. But they offset it nicely with the black with the red stitching on the rest of the interior. But looks good. Door panels looking sharp, soft touch up top, some gray trim around the brushed aluminum door handle. We have the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system in here with flat black on your switch gear, a nice soft armrest with the stitching and a pretty decent size uh, door pocket as well. So it's a good looking door panel. Now we get over here, we have soft touch. We have more of this leather with the stitching in red. And then down below, we have a nice large glove box. Infotainment, we have a 10.25 inch Uconnect 5. When you say Uconnect 5, that means you got the latest and greatest, which means you got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Look at that performance there on the pinch to zoom, looking good. We got our nav, we got the, the uh, Bluetooth, your phone. You can go into your comfort settings and you can go ahead and adjust your dual climate. We got heated, heated and ventilated seats for both the driver and the front passenger with a heated steering wheel. So you got all the creature comforts in here. You can go to your media, get your Sirius XM or Bluetooth your phone for your own music library. We can go to our vehicle settings. We can go to my car. We can go to our e-hybrid page on this and see the power flow that we're getting on here. We can go to our performance pages. We can get all our gauges, additional gauges or accessory gauges in here. So they got you covered there. We can go to our controls and we can turn the screen off or adjust a rear view camera. We can go to our set settings, set up the vehicle however we like. It's a really easy and fast system to, to use. And now we go to our rear backup camera, nice and clear with trajectory and that tow center line. Would have been nice to see it take up the whole screen rather than having the parking sensor action going on on the left but it is a very very clear backup camera we come down here's our four-way hazards two heat and air vents now we have the hard controls for our heat and air which is nice here's the button to put uh start the car so you got push button start you got a 12 volt down below with the usb c usb a and a wireless charging pad here's the button to go into sport mode as we come down further we have 
this gear shift with the nice leather gator and the nice knob that's going to take you through the six-speed automatic. Here's the volume control for your speakers, electronic emergency brake. As we come down, we have traction control off, and then we can turn off our parking sensors. Down further, two cup holders. I love this gray trim. It's going to keep away the fingerprints and the scratches. And then we have our Dodge key fob right here. Looking good. Unlock, lock, pop the tailgate, remote start, panic button, Dodge badge on the back. Looking good. Nice weight, too. And then we have our armrest. It's small, but it's nice and soft with the Gred stitching. Open it up, and you do have a small area for storage. Dodge wheel. Love the Dodge wheel. Leather with the 10 and 2 notches. The blacked out Dodge badge in the middle. Let me know if you think that should be red to match the, the badges on the outside of the vehicle. That might have been a nice tie-in. But again, it might have been too much red with these red seats. So let me know what you think. Here's our e-drive modes, which we'll show you when we take a look at our digital dash. And then on the left here, you have your adaptive cruise control and modes for your infotainment screen. And on the right, you have your telephone voice commands and your controls for your digital dash. We do have big moose antler paddles that are hooked up to the driving steering column, which I like better than the wheel. Let me know what you think. This is going to go up and down the six-speed auto. And then on the stalks here, you got your bright lights and your turn signals. And then on the right, you got the front and rear wiper. Down below here, we can adjust our headlights, pop the uh, fuel filler door, pop the tailgate, adjust your brightness and, or dim the dash. And then we come on over to the wheel. We have a manual tilting and telescoping wheel and the wheel is a flat bottom wheel as well which is going to help you get in and out of the car nice and easy which is nice we come over here to the left door panel we have two three memory seat settings right in there for the driver and then down below here we have our power fold mirrors and they will fold up when you lock the car so that's also nice now we get to our 12.3 inch digital dash right here looking good now i'm going to hit the sport button to kind of wake everything up get this thing moving get the engine turned on we got the sport going on over there and so here we go so our e all-wheel drive modes as we look at them we can go all electric we can go e save or we can go full hybrid and that's going to give you obviously the engine and the electric usage so they got that action going, plus the sport mode that we have to basically push on, and we get this light up on our infotainment screen. So it's really quite easy to use. Then you have additional information that you can go through on the dash. You can bring up your nav. You can bring up your performance pages, whatever you want to may see in the middle of this dash. So it's nice and easy to use, and it's all digital. Overhead console, we got a lot of gloss black going on up here, but if you want to have your LED lighting come on and off and open and close the door, this button right here with the picture of the car on it needs to remain off. And when that is off, you open it and your LED lighting comes on, close the door, the LED lighting dims out. Here are the controls for the oversized roof. So we're going to open up our shade first. That's the button on the left. You click open. And open it goes nice and quick too. And then we hit our roof, and on back it goes. Wind buffeter comes up, and we can close our roof one touch back. And one touch back for the shade, and it comes back nice and quickly. We have a nice soft headliner as well. Sun visor with vanity. Does it slide? Yes, it does to protect you from the side sun. Getting in the rear seat of the Hornet RT, I have the seat set for my driving position. We'll just hop on in. A little low to get in, so you need to have to duck if you're taller without hitting your head. But once you're in, nice amount of room for your knees. For my head at 5'11", all red leather down. We've got a seat pocket behind the driver and the front passenger. In the back here, we got two heat and air vents, USB-C, USB-A, so they got you covered for connectivity. Rear door panels, same action as the front. Here's our front door panel looking good. Here's the rear door panel looking the same, same use of materials, same use of colors. And that, nice that they continue the vibe of the Hornet to the back. Back seats, again, red leather, nice headrests, nice and comfortable. They look good. Center armrest, very wide and soft, two cup holders. So they got you covered here in the back of this Hornet RT. It's a pretty comfortable place to be back here. 
All right, getting in the cargo area of the Hornet, you can pop it from the dash or from your key fob, or you come to the back and right above the license plate, there's a button. You push it, beeps a couple of times, nice electric assist on the way up, nice electric assist on the way down with this button here. And with the rear seats up, we have 27 cubic feet of cargo space. We have our floor mats right here looking good. Some extra accessories. Underneath here, more room for storage, but there's your fix -a flat so there is no spare in this RT. On the left, we do have some lighting, and we have a 12 volt, which is nice. And then we have this tonneau cover, which I'm never a big fan of. So we're gonna pop this off so we can let the rear seats down. Let the rear seats down. There's a button right here. You just lean forward, push them down, lean forward. They're a little tight. <clears throat> This is probably the first time they've been down in this car. And now we'll put this tonneau cover back up. Now we have it back up and in place. And when the, the rear seats aren't flat, a little bit of a kick up, but now you get 54.7 cubic feet of space in the back of this Hornet which isn't bad, but it's going to be a little bit low. You can remove this tonneau cover, though, to give you some more room for some taller items. But it's not bad here in a sporty small SUV. Let me know what you guys think. All right, here is our window sticker, so we'll zoom on in. Give you the close-up on this 2024 Hornet RT Plus. Their standard equipment. Options, total price, fuel economy, estimates, built in Italy. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, we're out on the road in this 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. We're in sport mode. And everything in here is tight and right in the sport mode. We got plenty of visibility out the windshield, side glass, rear view mirror, no problem, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that jazz in here for the tech. Got the LED lighting front and uh, back, which is good. We got great tech in here with your heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, connectivity front and back, wireless charging pad, wireless charging, and wireless connectivity. I mean, this thing has got all you need and then a little bit more. And what we also have here in sport mode is a very compelling sport SUV. This isn't just a sporty SUV. This has got some serious action. I had my doubts when I saw the power plant of a 1.3 liter plug-in hybrid engine with the six-speed automatic hybrid transmission I'm like oh how is this going to be is this just going to be a compliance car for Dodge to make sure the Dodge fleet meets the federal gas mileage standards or is it or is this going to be some fun and then when I saw the horsepower and torque numbers I said okay they're boosting horsepower they're boosting torque with the hybrid system as well as gaining a little bit of better gas mileage not a ton but a little bit better gas mileage than the GT and this thing is living up to the RT name no doubt about it it is firm on the ride because we got an Italian made sports SUV we are stiff on the steering very very nice and heavy nice weight very responsive feedback through the wheel tight as anything you could ever think of on the steering firm on the suspension feels great underneath me gives me a lot of confidence now we're gonna go ahead and do an emergency stop in three two one brakes no problem throws out the anchors stopped on a dime perfectly and now off we go Nice shifting out of the six-speed automatic. Down the road we go, no problem at all. 
feels really good. Really liking this Hornet RT. Uh, you know what? Alpha and Dodge did a real nice job on this car. Now we're getting down the road again. Freshly paved back roads in Flemington. Really nice to give you a demo of this vehicle. I got my auxiliary gauges up on the, uh, the dash here. I got my Uconnect 5 working like a charm. My wireless charging pad is charging my phone as we speak. Seats feel really good. They're a bit firm, but the bolstering hugs you in all the right places. Man, they know, I tell you, the Italians know how to make a fun to drive car, and this is no different. Now we're in sport mode. We're going to pull both paddles back at the same time and see how this power shot action works. Here we go. Power shot! Woohoo! Holy camoly! Woo! Woo! Ah, ah. That's awesome! And it's so simple to do. Just make sure you're in sport mode, get your foot down on the gas, pull back both paddles at the same time, you get that power shot, and boom! You get that extra kick in the rump, and down the road you go. Wow! Wow! Wow, man, now what? <laughs> this is a ton of fun. Yeah, 50, 51 grand is a lot of money for a Dodge Hornet, but you're getting a, a lot of performance and a lot of fun for 50, 51 grand. You're right in the same price range as an Alfa Romeo Tonali, set up the exact same way because they're the exact same car. And if you want the Dodge look, you got this one. If you want the Italian Alpha look, you got that one. You got some good stuff to choose from, no doubt about it. Turning radius, here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Woo! Yeah! Man, this thing is fun. Man! shot Woo! Woo! Ah, ah. <laughs> oh man this thing is a ton of fun Woo! all right all right so we had some fun but what I got to tell you is great car great SUV you don't have the most storage space in the back it's a lower roof. Okay, so you're compromised back there, but you got the tech, you got the performance, you got the fun factor. This thing is just fantastic. And if I was looking for that sports sedan, excuse me, sports sedan, sport SUV, I'd be putting this Dodge Hornet RT on my list to test drive. And you know what? I'd be putting the Alfa Romeo Tonale on my list of test drive and compare the two because they're both going to be a lot alike and they're both going to have some similar some differences as well i'm doing my best to try to get into an alpha dealer to get a tonali on the channel so we can compare them and i'm going to keep trying but i'm glad i got this 2024 hornet rt on because this thing is a boatload of fun Yeah, that's a boatload of fun. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about what, you've, about what you've seen here today. Is this something that you would rock in in this Dodge Hornet? Or are you going to go somewhere else with your hard-earned sport SUV money? Let me know in the comments. But I want to thank Sioka Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram here in Flemington, New Jersey for allowing the channel access to this 2024 Dodge Hornet RT for review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.